Hi everyone. So I'd like to look at an interesting situation. Um, this is a dormer roof that is meeting a normal roof and there's some rafters in here. And mm, we're busy working in Revit LT, which has some limitations. One of the limitations is if you do want to draw a beam, you can draw it uh, by 3D snapping, that's for sure. However, notice that if I switch out the views to say a wireframe model, and I try and switch on the analytical category, it's not available to me. So unlike the full Revit, I can't latch onto the analytical model in the structural uh, model. So that's a bit of a problem for me. But how can I get around this? How can I draw something that's kind of going to be in exactly the place where I want it to be? So what we do is we resort to a few tricks over here. So this beam is going to go from around about this point here to that point over there. So I can do this in various ways. I can start off by, say, drawing an annotation line. Um, we can make it a detail line. And let's see if we can pick up the, the, the intersection. Yes, indeed, we can. All right, so we can take a specific point over here and draw it up to a specific point over here. So if we snap to intersection, there is the detail line. This now gives me the ability to go one step further and say, all right, in this case, um, let's now carry on. F let's put it on to here. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'll have to play with this. Maybe iterate it once to get exactly the points that I need, but it's going to illustrate the point. All right, so then I'm going to generate a, uh, a work plan, a reference plan. So it doesn't want, doesn't want to align. There it aligns. There, when it turns blue, that aligns. All right, and so now I've got this work plan that is going through the points that I need. And I named this work plan, say, inclined rafter. All right, so that's, that's one of the things that I want to do. And then I need a view. So I want to come on sideways onto this view, and I look at this in sections so I can actually draw the beam where I want. So I generate a section. I, I generate it on that. Uh, let's snap to nearest onto that line so we're generating a view a sectional view looking this way let's keep it relatively short so we don't see too much in the background there we go and it's going to have a look at this view let's switch off some of the categories that we don't need um, hide in view by category as well as the roof is that the roof yes hide in view by category all right so we've just Kind of switch those off. Let's change this out into a fine and as well as a uh, shaded. All right. So, not overly clear. Let's increase the section box to see what we're busy with. There. And there is our sectional view. All right. So, if I look at that, then I want to draw this going from a point over here down onto this point over there. So there's the beam coming down. That's the far beam, as we can see over there. Right, let's change this into shaded, sorry, shaded. So this beam over there corresponds to this beam over here. All right. And the other beam that we're looking at, let's press control that beam over there. So if we look at this one and that one in my section there are the points that I needed to go to. So I need this say to go exactly from here. Let me show you with a line. So from here to there. To this, and I, now I want this endpoint here, but it isn't exactly an endpoint, is it? It's just somewhere in the section that it's getting cut, and I can't select it if I want to. All right, and this is where the trick comes in. So one, once you get a situation like that, when you want to select that little point over there, we resort to a trick, and we say, let's change that into a hidden line view, like so, and let's do a quick export. So we have file, export to uh, not 
DWFX but DWG file export to CAD format DWG I'm going to just change uh, the if I did have solids then one of the things you can just do is set that to ASIA solids but pretty much everything's fine I'm going to go next I'm going to export that into this um, directory over here okay let's just make sure that's fine save we don't want to export views on sheets and links as external references that's for sure okay okay that's not exporting this as a DWG and then we can import that or link CAD from that folder there it is in fact and I'm going to say I want to place this manual center and our interview and we're going to bring this in it's a current view only there it is okay so there it is and then we move this we move this into place so where we can where we know we can select an endpoint so I know there's an endpoint over there for instance right there's an endpoint so I can take this view over here and I can move it into position using this endpoint there to move it onto that endpoint there so now it's exactly on top of the other one and because I exported it to CAD I'm now able to draw a detail line from that endpoint onto that endpoint there All right. now it's easy because all I need to do I'm in the right plane and I just need to draw another beam so I create similar and I want to work in a named work plane which is the inclined rafter and then I draw it between two points and um, it's going to be from this endpoint over here up onto there somewhere. All right, so it might not be perfect as I've set it up, but the, but, but the idea will come through. And let's go and have a look in 3D or in plan view. There it goes. All right, and it's, and it's perfectly vertical. And all I need to do now is to slice this on some other work plan. All right, so again, I could create a work plan, mm. and you would have to do this a few times to get the effect that you want. But you can use another work plan. Where's our work plan tool? There, there's our reference plan that we can create over here, and we simply go to this beam over here, that one that we've selected, and then we say um, uh, cut cut geometry. So this is what we want to cut with that work plan that cuts it shorter All right. and you can do the same thing over here as well extend this beam a bit and, and cut it to look like it's fitting in nicely and that really is what it's all about so there's now a nice beam let's have a look at that All right in, in shaded there you can see and to cut this one shorter over there so that it fits onto that that's also easy we do the same thing also over here we create another uh, reference plane onto the edge there okay and let's extend it a bit tab onto the reference plane and extend that a bit we could name it of course and then we we do the same thing over here let's put it a bit shorter there we go and we do that because the long part of the beam is the one that's going to get kept and so we use the modify cut geometry tool again to cut this beam with that reference plane um, oops we've got the wrong side Let's just move this move from here onto there you can see automatically as you move the reference plane the cut geometry is actually moved along and that's how we can get this to show up like something like that okay so a relatively easy tool to use if you know how and um, it all depends on it you know if you take the if you take out the CAD import if you take out the CAD import come on there we go 
then uh, we can manage these links over here. There's the CAD link and we can unlink that. So we just remove that. And now that CAD import is out, but our geometry is still generated exactly as we wanted it to. So sometimes when you use Revit, you have to uh, resort to exporting to CAD and then you can get this kind of effect. Like I said, it's not the perfect Dormo that I've drawn, but then I'm sure when you draw your own house trusses that it will be perfect. And uh, good luck with that. And if you need any help with that, remember to contact us here at Micrographics so we can be of assistance to you. So have fun. And if you want to do this in Revit or Revit LT, um, it will work in both of those packages. Um, so don't let that stop you from generating some great roof dresses. Until next time, have a nice week. Bye.